You don't need green oil paint. You can make it easy enough yourself. Why buy something you don't need? I mean, you're going to mix additional colors into the store-bought green to change the green from the tube anyway, so why not just mix your own? For this video, I'll be mixing some oil paint from just a few colors that I use based on a slightly modified version of the Zorn palette. I'll share how to make several values of green and a few tips along the way. My base palette consists of Waysburg Flake White, Royal Talons, Rembrandt Series, Ivory Black. The next three are all Windsor and Newton, and they are Cadmium Yellow Pale, Cadmium Red, and Raw Umber. The Windsor and Newton series, they're all the artist series versions. They have more pigment uh, than the student grade, which yeah, it's up to you. If you want, you know, sketchbook or something, you know, student grade is probably okay. But I think if you want to produce art that's going to last for a while, stick with the artist grade when it comes to Windsor and Newton. A couple, couple cautionary things I want to add before we go on in this video. Cadmium colors, we'll say inorganic mineral-based oil paints are toxic. So make sure you're handling with care. You know, don't be eating while you're painting. Uh, I, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. You gotta wash your hands often. Make sure you have plenty of ventilation, things like that. The other eight to 10 colors in my palette, we'll call it my extended palette, are based entirely on what temperatures I wanna be able to work with, uh, different hues I wanna work with, uh, maybe tinting strength that I'm looking at, subject matter, um, that sort of thing you know, comes into play, obviously, but I, I still don't use, I really never use store-bought green. I've mentioned the Zorn palette, and some of you may be wondering what that is. The Zorn palette is based on the palette used by artist Anders Zorn. If you've never heard of Anders Zorn, he was a Swedish artist born in 1860. Zorn's limited palette of ivory black, lead white, yellow ochre, and vermilion became known as the limited palette for oil painters. In fact, these four colors alone can be all one ever needs. Seriously, at this point, I think it's safe to say that any colors outside of the Zorn palette are based on personal preferences and maybe convenience. Learning to use fewer colors and create mixes based on a limited palette of your own is a smart way to become proficient and efficient with just a handful of colors. You may even see a cost savings on materials in the long run. Every time I buy green oil paint, no matter what color it is, I always find myself tweaking it anyway. So I just, I just find it's not necessary in my limited palette at all. And in my extended palette, I often wonder why I purchased the green in the first place, so I don't even wanna use it. Look, I'm not saying that store-bought green is a good or a bad thing, or that you shouldn't buy it, because it's totally up to you. Your, your needs are different than mine, and you may find that you like the convenience of green. I'm simply pointing out that you shouldn't buy a color, a secondary color for that matter, even a tertiary color, uh, as a substitute for mixing the right color or the color that you want. I mean, working straight out of the tube, it's just kind of, you know, I think it's going to be rare that you ever find something straight out of the tube to match what you're trying to paint in nature. Knowing how to mix the right green and honestly the shades of any secondary or tertiary color in your sessions is probably, I mean, it's gonna make you better educated at which green or color to purchase, right? So if you're mixing colors and you're saying, okay, this is the tone that I typically always work with when I'm painting the trees that I paint or the flowers that I paint or whatever else green you use on a regular basis. Personally, I'd rather save room on my palette, whether it be the small, limited palette or the extended palette or whatever, I would rather save room for red, blue, yellow, you know, just various versions like a warm, warm red and a, you know, maybe a, a different cool and warm versions of each. I mean, really it's, it's personal preference. I know, but the point of this video is really not trying to say don't ever buy green. It's I'm trying to say, know why you're buying it before you buy it. Don't be lazy. When I paint with green, I typically start with a base color and tweak it from there anyway. I'll add additional white, um, I may add more black, uh, I may lighten it with yellow, orange, I mean there's just, 
various things that I'm going to do to that green anyway, right? Okay, one final tip. If you find yourself mixing a particular hue of green, right, with a, a value and a temperature and a, a particular chroma, and you find yourself always using that when you go out to paint, like in the field, like if you're a plein air painter or something like that, you can buy empty tubes, aluminum tubes, just, just like the tubes you're using, right? But they're empty, they don't have any uh, information on them. Uh, they're basically ready for you to fill. So what you do is you mix up the green you like, a lot of it, big pile of it, a whole bunch of it, whatever. Fill that tube up, crimp it shut. Now you've got your own green, the green that you like to use, not a store-bought green, and take it with you. So keep that in mind. That's, that's kind of essential to what I'm trying to say here. All secondary color, all tertiary color, you know, depending on where you start, which colors you start with, can be made, right? We can see about 7 million colors with our eyes, uh, but we're not gonna see that many on a painting. We're not gonna be able to reproduce that many colors. The, the gamut's just smaller. That's another video altogether. If you like these videos like this, where I talk a little bit more about my reasoning for why I do what I do and maybe some, some color theory or whatever, let me know in the comments and we'll do some more of these because I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit. So, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. If you found this video valuable, helpful in any way, please give me a thumbs up. That really helps. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.